What's up OTA Nation? Justin here with On Target Air Gunner. Today we're going to check out this scope from Vector Optics, the Taurus 5 to 30 by 56. So this is my new scope from Vector Optics, the Taurus 5 to 30 by 56 first focal plane scope. This is my second scope from Vector Optics. And so far I'm pretty pleased with both of my scopes. This scope has a 30 millimeter tube and resettable turrets. So you can find your zero or whatever distance you want and reset the turret. The turrets are set up in mil radians and one click equals one tenth of a mil. The reticle does have an illuminated dot. Um, however, it is kind of hard to see on the lower magnifications. You kind of have to zoom in to a higher power to be able to see it. Um, I did notice that on the highest magnification um, the image was a little harder to stay uh, centered i guess the eye relief um, seemed to diminish on the higher magnification and i had to be sure that i was my eye was um, really lined up and centered up with the scope otherwise i could easily see scope shadow you know the black ring kind of like a crescent ring on one end or the other by the way guys make sure to subscribe i appreciate all my subscribers and i appreciate all my viewers I'm trying to get to that 1000 subscriber mark uh, hopefully we can get there before the end of the year This scope is a little bit on the bigger side. Uh, total length is 15.75 inches and the weight 28.7 ounces. It does come with 30 millimeter Picatinny rings, um, however, on my application, I had to use the Vector Optics adjustable rings. Um, I ran out of elevation adjustment and the pellet was still hitting low, so I had to get some adjustable rings to make the back ring just a little bit higher than the front ring. It wasn't too much, uh, but that's pretty common for air rifles and higher powered scopes. Be sure to use my promo code OTA10. That'll give you a 10% discount as well as help uh, support my channel as well. Make sure you check them out on vector2007.com. All right, so this is on the lowest magnification right now. Parallax is set to infinity. Those cows out there at about a thousand yards. And that's several miles away, those hills out there. All right, so this is the magnification on full setting, 30 power. We're looking at about 75 yards at some of those weeds right there. Let me just adjust the parallax so you guys can see how it... Uh... Check that out. You guys didn't even know that was there, the barbed wire. The barbed wire is about 30 yards. You can see it clears up some of the weeds up front. Clears up now some of the weeds in the back. And then there we go with the 
hillside in the background. Okay, there we go. Now we got it. And those cows are about a thousand yards away. There. Parallax is adjusted accordingly. Just right before infinity setting on the parallax. That's 30 power. Thousand yards away. That horse up at the top, that's probably a couple miles, maybe a mile or two. That's way far away. Let me uh, see if I can dial back on the magnification. All right, let's try and get this shot before it gets too dark. So we're gonna try the box test with my new uh, Vector Optics Taurus, five to 30 by 56, first focal plane. It's at 50 yards, so I got it zeroed in. We're gonna shoot three, three shots uh, at the center target. I'm gonna go up 20 clicks, um, over 10 clicks, if my math is right. Up 20, no, it's up 20 over 20. And it should be 3.6 inches. And I made a little indication on the paper out there. So if it tracks correctly, it should hit all of my little crosshairs out there. You'll see once we start shooting. Wind is pretty calm. Well, I mean, uh, that should have been right at the zero. Let me check the regulator, see where we're at on the air. Now we're still good on air. Of course this happens. Gun is level. There we go. That's better. So we're going to do three shot groups. So that's one. Two. Three. All right, go up 20. Let's see. By the way. So that's 10, 20. Then we should go left, or I'm sorry, right 20. Out of the way. So that's 10. 20. Okay. It should be, if I aim back at zero right here, it should hit that upper right cross. Okay, did not chamber around. Getting all flustered because I'm trying to hurry up and do this before it gets dark. So gun is level. What the heck? I'm super backwards. Okay, so I saw it hit the bottom left. This is my first time doing a box test, guys. Come me some slack, please. But 
it does look like it's tracking correctly because I'm aiming at the center and it's hitting low left and the same thing it hit low left on that bottom left corner going this level Okay, now let's see, I already went 20 that way. Yeah, I really screwed this one up. <laughs> Let me just take it back to zero. Let's see, so if I go back, we'll go 20 the other way. I'll leave this, uh, the elevation where it is, so it should hit now the bottom right target. You see, I shot four and three, so I should have three shots left. Gun is level, aiming at the center, should hit bottom right. There it is. Okay, come on, it's getting dark. All right. So same bottom left from the crosshair. By the way, thank you guys for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Let's try and get to that thousand subscriber mark before the end of the year. Broke 500 not too long ago. Um, let's keep it. Let's keep it going. Okay. So now let's mess with the elevation. So I'll take it back to my zero. And then if I go 20 the other direction, now it should sh shoot that top right target as long as I aim at the center again. Okay, so maybe that that did not go bottom left. Good groups though, two in the same hole. 50 yards, gun is definitely accurate. Okay, so maybe the elevation tracking, or would that be the windage tracking? I don't know. I mean, it's still general vicinity. Should be 3.6 inches center to center. That's what I drew on the targets, 3.6 inches. All right, so now leave the elevation and then this one, return to zero, and then go 20 clicks over. Now the last three should be on that top left target. Gun is level. There it is.
I think it's pretty fair tracking. From other videos that I've seen and guys doing box tests, none of them ever None of them ever hit where they're supposed to hit. Um, that's pretty good. That's really good grouping as well. Especially that one right there. Another sub MOA group from the McCavity Arms MA2. I don't know if I'll leave this scope on there. It's pretty, um, it's kind of overkill for an air rifle. By the way, that was on max magnification 30 power that's 10 power cool my phone's still recording <laughs> i wonder if i could stop recording from here <laughs> all right let me go get the cameras turned off guys and then we'll do a recap i know this is a scope video but man this gun's accurate Looks very good on this gun as well, the scope. I do have the honeycomb filter on it. That could um, cause the image to be a little less quality. It looks good through the human eye. Got my MOA gauge. Let's see these groups. If they're above MOA, they're definitely Still pretty good sized groups. Beautiful out here. All right, so I was trying to explain how I was doing the box test. So first group was here, but you can see it was low left. Um, I thought I was gonna hit up here next, but I guess you know, it was 20 clicks down, 20 clicks over. So, a little bit off, a little bit off of the track, and I think it should have been more right here instead of just a little bit left from that. And then if I went over 40, for whatever reason, the elevation dropped. Um, maybe, when I, mean, I did check these, these were level you can see I went over 40 and instead of hitting low left kind of almost right on line did up 40 you see right on the line again instead of left and then over 40 low left but not as much as this group was like I said the tracking in other scope videos it, nobody ever seems to get the tracking correct for whatever reason. Um, but it's still pretty decent. Anyways, here's that group. Sub MOA. 50 yards. How about this one? Yeah, center to center, sub MOA. Sub MOA. Sub MOA. Sub MOA. Four groups, five groups. One, two, three, four, five. Sub MOA. 50 yards. <laughs> like I said, it's not a gun review, it's a scope review. But man, this scope with this gun, definitely uh, dialed in. Very good pair. Okay, so after looking at my target, my math was right, but my drawings were wrong. These were not 3.6 inches apart. Um, so let's just forget about what's drawn on here. If we use simple math, 3.6, 3.6, this should be 5.09 inches. 5.09, 5.09, 5.09. Um, so I got my digital caliper, and what I found was essentially they are 5.15 so just fractions of an inch off of that 5.09 and I think that's pretty much as close as 
we're going to get shooting an air rifle outdoors where there's other variables that come into play. So I would confidently say that that tracked correctly. All right, guys, so that's my review of the Vector Optics Taurus 5 to 30 by 56 first focal plane. Uh, all in all, I like the scope. I think it did well. It tracked as it should. And I think if it would have been in a controlled environment uh, mounted on a solid surface with a pellet on pellet gun, then we would have seen um, perfect tracking. Anyways, this is Justin from On Target Air Gunner. Thank you for watching. Let's shoot some more.